Hey, what's up guys? It's Jonathan here, back with another public stock portfolio update. So in this video, we'll do a recap of the market this week. We'll do a recap of the moves that we made in the public account for this week. And we'll also do an overall account recap as well. I'll also give you an update on the AMC challenge. And we'll talk about some important things to watch out for in the markets moving forward. So if this video provides you any value, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. They both greatly help out the channel, help push this video out to as many people as possible. So let's get right into it. To recap the market this week, Monday started off with a strong run into the first hour of trade-in, then flattened out for the preceding 90 minutes after that. Then it ran again for a couple hours, but it fell into the close. Then on Tuesday, the market had a strong run at open, but flattened out for the rest of the day. This flat trend continued for the rest of the week, only moving about half a percent in either direction throughout the week. So the back end of this week was very quiet. Overall, for the week, the S&P 500 was up about 4%. This week was a very busy week in the public account, and we did a lot of buying on Thursday. So the first buy that we made was we bought some more Disney stock, and we bought about $3 of Disney stock at $152.34 a share. And this purchase was mostly just to add on to this position. And at that price of $152, that's very comparable to the prices we saw in Disney in late December of 2020. So in my opinion, I don't think that's a very terrible price to buy this stock at. For me, I like this stock because it's a good value stock that I, could, that I see using as a hedge against re- rising interest rates. Given that a big chunk of this portfolio is, are filled with a lot of high PE tech stocks. Then the second purchase we made this week in this account is that we bought some more Google. We bought about $2 worth of Google at $2,951.82 a share. And again, this was another buy to dip purchase. Recently, we've gotten a pretty good dip on Google, so I am a little bit more open to adding on to this position while we're still in this dip phase. So the third purchase that we made inside the public account is that we bought some more Hood, and we bought about $4 of Hood at $23.27 a share. And again, this was another buy to dip purchase. We're still yet to find a bottom for the stock. I believe at the time of this recording, the stock is in somewhere in the neighborhood of like $19, $20 a share. So it is still falling, but at some point I do expect it to U-turn. And I think that's when you'll see me do a lot more buying into HUD once we see that U-turn. So I'll probably slow down my buying until we see that U-turn happen. So now let's go into my iPad. I'll show you how the whole portfolio is currently doing. So currently the portfolio sits at $134.11. We have about $35 worth of cash in this portfolio on top of this. So we have about $170 or so inside the portfolio. So the first position we have here is Robinhood. And currently Robinhood makes up about 18.5% of the portfolio. And our position in Robinhood currently sits at $24.81. We're down about 33% on this position. Next position we have here is Enphase Energy. Currently, we're up on Enphase about 38.7%. So we're really kicking butt on this. Um, currently, it makes up about $23.58. And it makes up about 17.5% of the portfolio. The next position we have here is Tesla. And Tesla, again, like Enphase, has been kicking butt. We're up about 38% on this position. Currently, we have about $13.81 worth of Tesla. And it currently makes up about 10% of the portfolio. The next position we have here is Alphabet. And Alphabet is up almost 4%. And we have about $10.33 in Alphabet. And makes up about 7.7% of the portfolio. The next position we have here is Disney. Currently, our Disney position is down almost 4%. And we have about $7.69 worth of Disney in this portfolio. It currently makes up about five and three quarters of a percent of the portfolio weight. So the next position we have here is Amazon. Currently our Amazon position is down about a third of a percent. And it makes up almost $5 of the portfolio or about 3.7% of the portfolio. So the next position we have here is Palantir. And Palantir is a software company and they have a very high valuation. And that's why we're seeing this beat down on Palantir. It's down about 16 and a quarter percent right now. And we currently, we have about $4.19 in this position. And makes up about 3.12% of the portfolio. So the next position we have here is a position I should have actually added to um, the one, some of the ones that we bought. But we did buy $4 of Ethereum. We bought it at $4,047.76. 
We're currently up a penny on it, which is about 0.15%. It makes up just slightly under 3% of the portfolio. And just a quick note here, actually, when I put in this order, I believe Ethereum was at like 39.70 something. And on public, it didn't execute until it went back up to 4,000. So this is just another good reason why you shouldn't be using a stock account like public to buy crypto. So I made a video talking about six mistakes you should avoid when buying crypto. I'll probably link it in the little I button on the upper right hand corner of the screen if you're interested in watching that. Typically with a lot of these platforms, if you're not careful, you'll get ripped off on pricing pretty badly. So this is something good to consider if you are considering buying stocks on public. That would be my one criticism about that. So the next position we have here is NVIDIA. Currently our position in NVIDIA is down about five and a quarter percent. And currently we have $3.79 invested into NVIDIA and makes up about 2.8% of the portfolio. So the next position we have here is our Bitcoin. Currently our Bitcoin is down almost 11.5%. We have $3.54 invested into Bitcoin, which makes up about 2.6% of the portfolio. So the next position we have here is Redfin. Currently our Redfin position is down almost 18 and a quarter percent. And currently we have about $3.25 in Redfin and makes up 2.4% of the portfolio. So a quick update on the AMC challenge. We bought four shares of AMC at $37 a share as a part of a challenge that we had on one of our very first portfolio update videos. Currently AMC is at $27.32 a share. So we're down about 26% or $38.72. The pain that we're seeing in the broader market is really hitting those momentum stocks hard. So I wouldn't be surprised if this position is even further down in the near future. Again, I don't plan on selling until at least the beginning of next year. So we'll see, we'll be able to see the progress. So some important things to watch out for for next week. When it comes to Congress, they did pass a stopgap budget for to cover until I believe mid-March. So we're good on that front but they're still yet to resolve the debt ceiling crisis issue. So I wanted to clear up some of the confusion from the last video. It seems like some of you guys were confused about what was going on with the debt ceiling. So back in October, we had an issue where we were going to hit the debt ceiling and um, the leaders in Congress came together and they extended the debt ceiling to cover until mid-December. So now since we're in mid-December, they need to now cover mid-December until at least the next stopgap bill, if not for the rest of the physical year. Just this Tuesday, the House passed a fast track authorization that enables the Senate to pass a debt ceiling bill with a simple majority. So that's just 5149. This allows the Democrats to be able to increase the debt ceiling to cover the rest of the physical year without any GOP support. And the reason why the Democrats and the Republicans were able to agree on this is because the Republicans want to be able to solely blame the increase of the debt ceiling on the Democrats. And this is not to take sides or anything. Let's say the Republicans had power inside both the House and the Senate, they would most likely increase the debt ceiling because of the negative consequences that could come from it if they didn't do so. But they're just more of just using it as a political football right now. So when it comes to inflation and the Federal Reserve, so on Friday we got our CPI readings for November, and it came out to be the highest CPI readings that we've got ever since 1982. And for the month, we got a 0.8% inflation reading, which if you annualize that is about 9.6%. Even with this news on Friday, the market hardly reacted to it. And this is really because it was already expected to be a really high number. So there wasn't really much shock value to the markets, but it's still pretty worrisome to see that in one month we had almost 1% inflation when in a typical year, you'd have anywhere from about 2 to 3% inflation. So that means that we had almost 4x the inflation. So this coming Tuesday and Wednesday is when the Fed has their FOMC meeting. The main topic of discussion will be, is the Fed going to speed up their tapering and start liftoff faster? And for those of you guys who don't know what liftoff is, that's basically when they start raising interest rates. And whatever comes out from that meeting will have a huge effect on the markets going forward. As if we see a speed up in, tape, in bond tapering and liftoff, we may see a lot of tech and very high PE stocks suffer because of this news, but we'll most likely see value stocks do pretty well with this news. But if the Fed comes out and says they're gonna keep the pace the same, 
Tech will most likely move up a bit. That's just because of Jay Powell's recent comments, where he seems to be a little bit more hawkish on the inflation situation. And pretty much what hawkish means, that he's more willing to take action to stop inflation or to cool it down at least. When it comes to the new um, variant, Omicron, so far all US cases of Omicron have mild symptoms and no reported death. There's a strong belief in the scientific community that the variant may be weaker than Delta. Even though Omicron is more contagious than some of the other strains that we've seen, it is less likely to be deadly. And there's also the belief that the current vaccines that are on the market are sufficient enough to provide protection against the severe side effects of this new variant. So because of this, it seems like Omicron will become a nut and burger when it comes to the markets. But we should still pay attention to this because, again, this is relatively new in the U.S. It will be important for us to really know if this will actually cause um, any more shutdowns or um, slowdowns in travel or anything like that. So that's basically all I got for you guys this week. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. They all greatly help out the channel and they help push this video out to as many people as possible. I'd like to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about the markets right now? Are there any particular stocks you're looking at? Are there any that you're thinking about that may move the markets? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you guys. Also, follow me on all my social medias. I post there as often as possible. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.